Church family. Good morning, good evening, whenever you're catching up to this. I wanted to connect with you in person as much as I'm able to say hello uh, here virtually and give you a, a public service announcement, I think is the closest to what this is. Uh, first, you may have figured out by now that uh, by order of the governor, we're in a shutdown. And uh, we won't be opening again for live services until April 19th. And even that, I'm not real sure uh, that that's going to be uh, going to be possible. So hopefully you will also know by now that we've gone public with our Four C's online services. And so if you open our webpage at www.4c's.church, uh, you'll see front and center an invitation to watch online and to connect with Four C's worship online. By checking that box, uh, you'll go right to a second page with a bright Easter link right in front of you. I think that's pretty cool. I'm pretty proud of our guys and the work that they're doing on the tech side. From the 4Cs webpage, you can keep up with all the various ministry expressions that are continuing during this difficult time that we're trying to unpack for you uh, uh, on our web and Facebook uh, environments. So if you haven't already opened that uh, web book, uh, uh, excuse me, the online worship service page, I really, really want to implore you to go back a week and uh, watch the May uh, March uh, 22nd worship service. There's some important words for our church there, and I'd love for you to uh, to keep up. That the the name of that service is He Set His Face Like a Flint, and I guess you'll have to tune in to the church service to know exactly what that means. So I want to give you a, a brief tech walkthrough. Maybe you you should stop and and open up the web page, but uh, I'm just going to do this real quick because actually I'm not the techie guy, but uh, I think this might be helpful for you to understand how hard we've been working to connect with you and resource you. When you're at that Easter box on the second page, just below that is a, a little box that says YouTube. And chances are, if you've already opened this video, uh, you've already found that little button. But this 4C's YouTube page will allow you to connect with the many resources that we've, that we've placed uh, right there for your use. And I, and I want to assure you, or reassure you, uh, that even though the word subscribe, you'll punch that little red button, it'll say subscribe, uh, but you're not signing a contract, you're not downloading a software program, you're simply accessing the YouTube uh, 4C's page that's filled with all kinds of ministries designed for your family, your children, your youth, for you to worship with. You'll be asked for your email, and that will release you to a menu of services that will come direct from our ministers. If you pop over in that, in that YouTube page, if you pop over uh, two tabs to the playlist tab, you'll find worship, children's, youth, family, resources, videos, all kinds of things that have been set aside for you during this time of isolation, I guess. So there'll be a growing set of events and videos there. So I really, really invite you to uh, keep that in your mind as you continue to figure out this virtual world that we're living in. I wanna say something to our parents, especially the parents of our teenagers, because I, I can imagine that there's some concern about uh, open screen time with your teens, your fusion and high point age teens. And so um, I get that. In fact, I'm in favor of your very protective work in the life of your teens regarding uh, online possibilities. But during this time of isolation, our, our teens don't get to be with their friends. They especially don't get to be with their church friends. And so in an effort to keep those connection levels high, um, our youth staff have set up wonderful opportunities using Zoom software, that Zoom platform, so that kids can meet in real time, face to face, and engage in prayer and teaching. And it's a wonderful moment of connection. It's one of the few ways that they have to continue to stay connected with their youth group friends. So if you've got questions over this, I, I really think it's a huge deal. If you've got questions about this, you need to call, call or, or email uh, Brian and Claire, and they've got great answers for your great questions. All right, so let's keep going. Uh, a little bit below that Easter box is also a page, uh, a little place where you can submit prayers. And I invite you to do that. One of the things that we can do best for each other during this time when we can't connect in person is to connect together through the Holy Spirit, through the venue of prayer. And so fill out that little box and we will be faithful to take those prayer requests 
uh, before the king as a staff and as a, a team of prayer warriors. And uh, I, I expressly want you to think about downloading our, our best um, our best way platform, software platform, is through Zoom, and that's a, a meeting platform. You can download that to your computer, and uh, increasingly we're going to be opening our first and third Wednesday prayers, mail call, other events, so that we can join together in groups that we're used to meeting, and uh, small groups we're encouraging for each small group to continue to meet, in fact, even meet more robustly, uh, and use that Zoom platform to be able to have some really refreshing times of prayer and connecting. So all of that stuff is going on. It's kind of like having church with your slippers on. So, uh, so I like that. So just before I close, uh, I want to talk a little bit about finances because I know that during this season, lots and lots of people are finding themselves uh, shut down in terms of finances and work, and it's really, really hard. Two, two things I want to say. Uh, for one thing, uh, on our communion Sundays, you remember we've been taking a benevolence offering for such a time as this. If you're in a spot and you need some help financially, your church wants to come along beside you. You simply need to contact me through email and uh, an elder or one of our staff will connect with you and we'll find a way uh, to get some help to you during this time. Uh, the second thing I want to say to you is it, it turns out it gets hard for the church as well. Some people aren't going to be able to give as robustly because they don't have the money. And that means that some of us are going to have to work hard to kind of pull the weight for them while we get back on our feet in meeting. And so I'd ask you to consider going to the web page and hitting that button on the front page that says giving and, and consider putting together a, a, a direct um, deposit from your checking account into the church. It's, it's one way. It's how I do it. It's one way of giving in a very disciplined manner, and that might help us continue during this season when uh, passing the plate face-to-face -face is impossible. All right, all those things in mind, I want to go on a field trip, so I'm going to invite my camera people to come help me here. Here we go. I'm going to jump up. Here I go. Ready? Here we go. And uh, All right, we're going to head down the hallway here because it turns out we have not been uh, just standing around. We've been keeping busy and uh, I'm really, really excited about this new space that's opening up here. We have this wonderful new space that the youth have been using that you helped us do. Whoa, it gets noisy in here. And, um, and that space has become not only youth space but kingdom space. Nathan was telling you earlier about the um, uh, uh, blood drive that's going to be happening on April 5th. And so that space has just become a, a kingdom presence, and so I'm really, really excited about that. But now this space is becoming a kingdom presence. This is the old youth room, directly below the sanctuary, and it's being painted and fitted with new carpet that will match the carpet on the other side of the building. And this space will represent another three or four thousand dollars, four thousand dollars, three or four thousand square feet. Uh, maybe money too, but, but what we're hoping to do is be able to release this now for kingdom work. Keep coming this way. So here's the big hallway, uh, freshly painted. It's, uh, I'm going to say it's about, oh, I don't know, mm, at the end of this month, uh, middle of April, ready to be done. This is the old couch room. It's been given a, a once over, and the bathrooms that probably were circa 1960. Uh, are going to be brand new, new floors, new tile floors, new sinks, and uh, it's just a completely freshened room, so I'm very, very excited about that. Not only that, but we've got 60 new LED lights going in all over the church. Uh, the carpets are getting cleaned for the first time in 100 years, and there's going to be new signage up around the church. You won't even recognize the place. It's going to be brighter, it's going to be cleaner, it's going to be bigger, it's going to be stronger, and it's all for you. And so uh, come back and enjoy your new church home. All right, I want to just uh, wrap up now. There's a verse that we've been using, a verse that I've been setting to memory, and I think it's an important verse for our church. I want to bring us back toward prayer. You remember in 2 Chronicles chapter 7, at the time of Solomon's temple, God spoke to Solomon, saying, When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence, disease, among my people, there's this verse that says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face they will, and turn from their wicked ways, 
Then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. I invite your humble prayers on behalf of our community. We have many in our community that are high risk and have been quarantined now for many days. It's lonely and there's a temptation for fear to kick in. Our children, our small children are afraid and confused. Parents of smaller kids, elementary age kids, are being stretched to somehow take care of a child and work from home. There are four families in my small group alone who have aging parents, parents with dementia that are uh, separated from them now. They can't even visit, and it's a terribly devastating moment for them. We have people that are in convalescing, in rehab, and families can't see them or be with them. So this is a time when I would invite you into deep prayer. For the Lenten season, I've been fasting all day on Wednesdays, and I want to invite you in some manner to join me in fasting during this season. I want to join you to actually going to your knees, as I have been, as a demonstration of my humility. God says, if you will humble yourselves, well, that's one way to do it. And so humble yourselves, asking for wisdom and calm and the hope that comes from our comforter, the Holy Spirit. So there's a lot more I want to say, but not right now. Check your bulletin announcements on the homepage of our website. Come to our blood drive on April 5th and watch for more of them. Wash your hands. Think well of others who do life differently than you do. Stay home. Pray for our leaders. Pray for our church. Wash your hands. And it's time for us to realize that the church is better outside the walls than we are inside the walls. And inside the walls, man, we are really great. So take that to heart. Wash your hands. The Lord be with you.